Let's try Mark from Rally. Mike, rather, Mike from Rally, a website member. Please save us, Mike. Hey, David, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Well, thank you very much for letting me on. I'm hopeful, hopeful I can save things here. I wanted to ask you about a school voucher, something that I've not heard you bring up too many times on the podcast before. Uh, I live in North Carolina. Uh, our state legislature recently expanded the families that are eligible for it. And now applications for these school vouchers are up like something like 500% this year. Mm hmm. Um, I have some friends and family who are big fans of these school choice vouchers. Um, one I talked to recently said that she thinks that they help private schools and non-public schools compete better with the public schools. That that just doesn't like compete with me. These folks generally tend to, uh, tend to subscribe to like minimal government conservatism. Yeah. And using school vouchers to artificially help other schools compete against private schools just doesn't make sense to me. I just wanted to get your opinion. So here's my view um, on school, school vouchers. OK, here's my view. So let me give you the nominal advantages and then we'll talk about what the cons are and whether they outweigh them. In some generic sense, school vouchers can give some people more choice. Now, in reality, a lot of times the schools that you can you go to with the voucher don't have buses. And it's not like, is it really choice or is it the appearance of choice? But really, it's only choice for the people that are already wealthier and don't really need the voucher to begin with. So that's a pro, but it's a pretty limited pro. There's an opportunity for a more tailored education, right? There might be a particular school that's more aligned with your kid's style or interests or your beliefs or whatever. So that's a possibility. There's the idea that you're generating competition by making public schools have to say, hey, it's not just you come here or you don't and pay somewhere else. You can actually take your money that would be allocated to your child and go somewhere else. We've got to be better. It's going to encourage competition. But the reality is a lot of times to better compete, the public schools need more money, not less. And the voucher takes money away. Uh, and there is the, I guess, possibility that there is some specialized program that a public school simply can't offer that with your voucher, you go to some other charter or private school and, and they offer it. And OK, maybe the problem is the voucher programs in every instance I've looked at, they worsen the public schools by letting someone say, hey, if I don't go to the pu public school, I get to take money out of it. It makes the public school even worse, which is often what these right wingers want to do. They want to take as much money out of the public school system so that it becomes terrible. And it actually creates even more inequality because by reducing the funding to the school that you can go to for free, you actually make it even worse than what some of the paid alternatives could be. And so you make the quality of the education someone can get even more dependent on the financial situation of their family. There's also often a lack of accountability. Whatever amount of money is allocated to your child in a public school, there is oversight and there are regulations and there are standards. If you take that money out and you bring it over to a charter or a, or a private school, all of a sudden you're taking public money, bringing it over. And now it's in a school that doesn't have the same accountability and standards as the public schools. So, you know, I, I could go on, but the, the ge generically the idea of saying, hey, choice is good. Specialized schools are good. Cool. Yeah, all right, that sounds interesting. Sounds great. Um, there's many things about the school system we have that I think are basically just based on getting people into like generic factory type work, whether it's literally factory work or sort of like thinking factory work. And, and some people call it a Prussian system. I think there's a lot of problems, but I don't think taking even more money out of it and, and giving it to charter or private schools is the answer. I could go on about this too for a long time, but I think that the way you just wrapped it up there is kind of the crux of it is that I, I don't think that the answer to improving public schools, which is what most kids in any state are going to is, it's to take is money not going to be taking funds away. Exactly. Well, thanks David. All right. My pleasure. There's Mike from rally on uh, school vouchers. Great to hear from you. Let's go to Ben from New York. Ben from New York. Welcome David, to the thanks program. For taking the Thank you for taking the call. I appreciate it. Great to speak with you. Likewise. My question, my question is this. I've been thinking a lot about how uh, how we've come to this this place where it's kind of it's two parallel things. Number one, the, how the left has become this. Uh, this is how I've seen it. The side of principle. OK, Ben, you just glitched on the word principle glitching badly. Can you still hear me? Oh, well, then. Oh, boy. Yes, I can. OK, we lost the oh, entire no. question. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. OK, um, 
I, I, how the right, uh, the left has, is the side of principles and the left is the side somehow of, um, uh, the right is the side of just still go with whatever. Um, aligned with that somehow has been that the left Democrats have been put with China, that there's this imagined loyalty with China and the right has, I don't know how this has happened, uh, become aligned with Russia. And I kind mm. of wanted to hear your thoughts on on how this has happened uh, if this is just a recent thing since since 2016, since Trump and MAGA have taken over the Republican Party, um, I, I was really interested in hearing your thoughts on these. It does these predate. You can go back and go and watch the 2012 debate between Obama and Romney, and you will see that this topic of who thinks China versus Russia is worse and who's aligned where this was already starting to be an issue in 2012 and probably earlier. But it really took on the kind of weaponized texture that it now has because of uh, the Russia investigation with Trump in 2016, 17, 18, then Trump claiming that he's tough on China with regard to tariffs that he didn't even understand. Then Trump with covid blaming China and saying Biden is affiliated with China and then Biden's going to be soft on China. So it took on these weaponized dynamics under MAGA Trumpism. But the concept of who's better, worse, who's aligned where Russia, China, it does predate Trump. It's just gotten way worse under Trump. Fascinating. Thank you for taking the call. I appreciate it. Apologize for the technical difficulties. All right. We figured it out. Ben from New York. Excellent to hear from you.